Let's talk a little today about neurofeedback, which is a kind of training for the brain, very much like you might train your body by doing aerobic exercises. We know that when the heart beats, it may beat slowly or it may beat quickly, depending on how much energy uh, the body is requiring it to produce. And the same is true with the brain. We can look at uh, activity in the brain in terms of whether the frequencies that we're seeing there are slow, which would be 0 to 8 hertz or pulses per second, <clears throat> whether the neurons are beating in the medium range, which would be 8 to 12 or 8 to 15, or in the fast range, which would be above 12 or 15 hertz on up to about 38 pulses per second. What's interesting here is that the frequencies and the activity in the brain have an effect on our mental states exactly as the frequencies that the heart beats have an effect on our physical states. Slow frequencies are creative intuitive thought. They put us in touch with our unconscious or subconscious mind and we're kind of inside our head thinking with pictures, jumping to answers and seeing kind of the big picture. Whereas the other processing speed is the fast frequencies, 12 to 38 or 15 to 38 pulses per second. Those are related to logical, rational thought. Two pretty different types of thought, but both very valuable. Uh, beta is the conscious mind. The fast frequencies are conscious. Slow frequencies are subconscious or unconscious. And where slow frequencies we pay attention inside our head, fast frequencies we pay attention inside or outside, but in a more organized way. With slow we think with pictures, with fast we think with language, slow we jump to conclusions, fast we can think in sequences and steps and hierarchies. Slow is the forest view, fast is the trees view. So these two types of thinking are very different, very valuable. A person who gets stuck in either one can have a problem. So a person whose brain primarily produces slow speeds will be inside his head thinking with pictures, having difficulty processing language, we'll probably call that person attention deficit. A person who is thinking very fast, always thinking with words inside his head, overly detailed, perhaps intellectualizing, we might call that person anxious. There's a medium set of frequencies between 8 and 12 or 8, 5, 8 and 15, depending on where in the head we're looking. And that is the frequencies called alpha, which is the bridge state. People who have alpha can go back and forth. They can see what's going on in their subconscious minds and think about it consciously. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling angry, instead of simply feeling it. This is the still present state. This is the meditative or the prayer state. When we stop uh, giving thanks, we stop asking for things that we would like to receive, and we shut up and listen to see if God has anything to say. It's a state of the observer. We're watching our own thoughts. It's also an autopilot state. It allows us to do things that we know how to do without having to spend a lot of time or energy doing them. So the idea of neurofeedback is simply that we can actually look at that information using an EEG, in this case a digital EEG, so that we don't have to figure out what all the little waves mean, but that we can actually see amounts of activity that are happening in various frequencies. And more importantly, we can train it by giving the brain information about what it's doing we actually have the ability to give the brain the power to change itself. So let's take a look at an example here. We have, uh, for a moment, we have what we call a power spectrum up here. You can see that this runs from zero up to close to 60 pulses per second. And we can also see that uh, there are different heights of activity. These are measured in microvolts, millionths of a volt, measured right through the skull by putting electrodes on the surface of the scalp. And we can see if there are taller bars, that is more activity down here in the slow frequencies, remember I said those went from zero to about eight, 
or in the middle frequencies that would go from about 8 to about 12, or in the fast frequencies, which would be 12 or 15 on up. As we look at this particular client, we see that the dominant activity is down here in the slow frequencies. And so this is a person who probably has difficulty with memory, staying focused, uh, processing language and being able to remember it, and so forth. I'm going to look at another uh, signal now. Here's another client. And let's take a look at what this brain looks like. Here you can see we don't have the big spikes of slow activity. There's one. But we have a lot of very fast activity. This is a person who was very, very anxious, um, had panic attacks, and had all kinds of problems along those lines. So this is a person that we would train to reduce all of this fast activity from about 23 up to 38 or so. This area is what we call hypervigilance. This would be a person who had had traumatic experiences, was highly stressed, and so forth. So we see that this person has a lot of activity in that area, and we might want to train that. And here we have another person. And this one you see has a lot of activity in the middle bands, between 8 and 12, the alpha bands. There's also a lot of fast and a lot of slow, but primarily what we're seeing here is taller bars in the alpha bands than we have in the others. If this person has their eyes closed, that's no problem. If they have their eyes open, it could be a problem because when we're in autopilot and we're trying to learn, the information comes in, we recognize it, it goes right back out again. Just like you driving from home to school on a regular day, if there's not a lot of traffic and nothing unusual happens, chances are that you will get there and know that you drove okay because you didn't have an accident and you didn't get a ticket, but you have no idea how you got there. You don't remember the trip at all. So the idea with neurofeedback is that we first look at the brain and see what the patterns are. We check with a client to find out what that client would like to be able to do faster, better, or more easily. And then we train the brain to do that. And here's an example of a training screen. We have a Pac-Man screen, and we have uh, a bar graph here. And this bar graph can be set up to, to reduce any frequency that we could basically tell the client, we want you to keep whatever this bar is below the target line. In the case of a person who has too much slow activity, we might set the, the bar to hold down say 2 to 8 hertz. And whenever the client is below, then the Pac-Man would move. Uh, you probably heard some clicking going on in the background as we were looking at those bands before. The clicking is a kind of feedback. Every time it clicks, it tells the client, now you're in the state we want, now you're not. We can train many different things with neurofeedback. We can train for uh, problems with attention, problems with control, impulse control, physical control, verbal control, emotional regulation. We can train to help people become uh, more attuned to their social situations and able to change that. We can help reduce anxiety. We can help to respond to depression, to brighten up a person's uh, brain. We can help the brain recover from head injuries. We can help people deal with uh, seizures and stop seizure activity. Uh, there are many, many different things. And so uh, this is sort of a quick summary of neurofeedback, and I hope it was of some help.